Praise Lord, we're just waiting for everyone to jump on. <laughs> Hello, Pony. Hello, Grace. <laughs> Hello, Eric. Praise the Lord. Lila. Ooh. We're starting very soon. Let's just wait for people to jump on. My Lord, Tristan. Yep, Sandra. Hi, Pony. <laughs> Remember to tag your friends, cousins, the want to hear the word today, encouragements. Hi Reese. Hello Reese. Can't wait. We'll be Sana will be sharing um her testimony today and we'll also be singing some songs. But um we tested it out and we realized the uh, it's not the best sound quality on um live. But if anyone got any suggestions what we should do to make the sound sound better when we sing, um, let us know. But for today, we shall go with what we got. But yeah, praise Jesus. And um, I know tonight will be a... Uh... Yo, Bobo, no, Bobo. <laughs> If you hear people sneaking around the back, it's just the girls trying to be quiet, but I can hear them moving around. So what is that? You guys are daddy. I will use the same scriptures as um, last time for Rivera, just to encourage everyone to um, to understand how important our testimony is. So awesome, um, we start very soon, but I have no clue how much people are watching. Um, Grace, is there 200 people watching yet? 500. 500? Okay, sweet, we start now. 20. <laughs> 20. 25. 20. <laughs> we'll just wait till there's 500 people, then we then we got to start. Sana's a bit nervous. Okay. Oh. Oh, no me. Use the words. Jonah, my creature. Holy. Lily, oh. Oh. So if there's 500 people, then we're, then we're going to start. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Did yeah, you all see that? <laughs> Man, praise the Lord. We'll be starting very, very soon. And have a sister Sana that'll be sharing her testimony. I um, hope this encourages anyone out there. Um, my name is Tui, Tui Fifira. My long name is Tui Bolotu Fifira. Lele mai me kolomotua. Mavao. So, who are you, Sana? I'm Sana. Uh, so, Sana. Nemo. I'm from. Lily, I can be. 
Um, I actually don't know. Oh, my mom. Yeah, she's from Falao. Mm. Yep. Hello, praise the Lord. Um, feel free to share as well um, if you have any questions. If there's anyone out there that has any le um, legit questions, please um, ask. Um, please share some questions and we believe that me and Sana can answer those questions. Falaha. <laughs> Praise the Lord, I'm, I'm from above. <laughs> the kingdom from above. <laughs> Good to see you, sis. Good to see that, that you're on fire for the Lord. Yeah. He's up. Who's that? Tau. Is it Tau? It's Tau. Is it Tau? Yeah. Oh. I think. Is it looks like Tau? Looks like... Okay, Tau, praise the Lord. I wasn't sure. Uh, Hello, Ophiel. Oh, hi, Ophiel. So you're still getting married? But well, um are you still getting married in July? <laughs> Is it still Ju uh, July or are you delaying it? After the lockdown. After lockdown. <laughs> mm Praise the Lord. Um, okay. Okay, we're going to start now. So um, we're going to start with a prayer. So Son of pray. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just come before you, Lord, and I just ask you, Lord, just to uh, open the hearts that are, that are watching, Lord Jesus, just to receive what we're sharing. I uh, pray, Lord Jesus, that um, anything that we share may be an encouragement to them and just I see that it is planted in their hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> before we start, um, hi, Ariana. God bless you, sis. I really miss all your faces. So, we start off with 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2 to 3. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2 to 3. I'm going to use the same scriptures as before. Just to, um, for them that hasn't watched to understand uh, what we're doing today. So Sana will be testifying um, in her testimony, sharing what God has done in her life. So 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2 to 3. And it says, there's Apostle Paul speaking. Apostle Paul says, you are our letter written in our hearts, known and read by everyone, being revealed that you are the letter of Christ, served by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in the tablets of stone, but in tablets are the heart of flesh. Amen. So you see here, our, our, we are, our walk is the letter. It's, it's the epistle. Uh, the Bible is meant to be revealed in us. Uh, we're seen, it says we're read by everyone. So I believe the reason why we're sharing today is um, uh, people will, will see the way you are. They need to, if you see you change, People ask a question on what God has done in your life. Um, it's not really by ink. It's not about um, your works, but it's about your life. So people will see a big difference in your walk. So praise the Lord. Um, the next scripture I want to go to is Revelation chapter 12. Hello, Noni. Mele. Maria said hello, Lila. Hello, Oh, I'm... Oh, so Lily can see you at the back. Oh. <laughs> Revelation chapter uh, 12 verse 11. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. <coughs> Praise the Lord. 
They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives even to death. Amen. So they overcame um, the enemy by the blood of the Lamb, meaning uh, by Jesus' sacrifice and by the um, and by the word of the testimony. And they did not love their lives unto death. So understanding that our testimonies has has powerful people, because if you say you believe in Jesus and there's no evidence of your of your faith, um, people won't come to God because they'll look at you as a as a liar. Mm. So we're just here to share with you guys. If you're really walking in Jesus, you need to testify with your with your testimony. Amen. So let's go to Galatians two, chapter two, verse twenty. Praise the Lord. It's going to be awesome. I'm not sure this is Sana's first time sharing a testimony. Is this your first time? Um, like on, on live? live? Yeah. yeah. First time ever on live. Yeah. But she's a woman of God, seen a big change in life, and it'll be encouraging for people to see someone that used to be shy like Sana. <clears throat> you know? Now she's <laughs> loud for the Lord. Okay, Galatians two twenty. Sorry, um, Galatians two twenty says, "I have been crucified with Christ, and it, it is no longer that I live, but Christ living in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave up, uh, gave Himself up for me." Amen. So we've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer that I live for myself, but I live for Christ. The life I live is is Christ's life. So that's why uh, our testimony is important. It's because they need to see Jesus in our lives and and our old lives is being crucified. Hey, Mose, praise the Lord, bro. Um, we're just here to, um, to just to encourage you guys, man, uh, it's all about Jesus, um, reading and seeing what God has done in your life. It's awesome. You know, our, our lives have been crucified, given to God. So Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Hey, how you been, Mose? Long time, bro. Haven't seen you since the plane. Um, Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Jesus speaking. Jesus says, Even so, let your light shine before people that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Amen. Like I shared before, uh, when they see the light in you, they'll glorify God. You know, man, God is in this man or in this girl. Uh, they've seen a massive change and they'll glorify the Lord. Uh, that's how people get, um, honestly, that, I believe that's what draws people to the Lord. It's not how you preach. It's not of what you do, but is what you show. When you show them Jesus and what Jesus has done in your life, I believe people come to God. You know what I mean? And that's why we're here to encourage everyone and share that he loves you guys. And... If anyone has any questions after this testimony, because we'll also be worshiping after this, um, we'll be singing a couple of songs. But um, but the qual the quality of the live, uh, the audio is not that good. But if anyone has any ideas of um, to making um, the live quality sound better, we can we can do that. But we're gonna sing a song anyway. But praise the Lord. So. That's the scriptures I'm going to share today. Just show you guys that what we're sharing is biblical. And we're here to share that God's amazing and encourage everyone that Jesus is, al is alive today. The reason why we can testify that Jesus is alive today because we're, we're the living sacrifice today. Sharing that we live for Jesus and not for us. <clears throat> so praise the Lord. Um, so Sana, we're going to go to Sana now. Um, so, Sana, how did your walk begin? Um, my walk began... Oh, I was actually invited from a sister, one of the girls from high school. Uh, she invited me to uh, come down to the ministry. Um, but at that time, there was only about seven, seven to eight people, and I thought it was a meeting. Knowing me, I, <laughs> I would have not gone to those type of things. Um, I had that mindset like churches that's your thing and I do what I want to do 
But when my um, when one of the girls um, invited me and I went over, um, everyone was just in their Bibles, and I just I just saw their their joy and their face and just a lot of peace. Um, but I, I couldn't understand anything to do with the Bible. Um, but how I came to the Lord was that like it took it took a while. Um, it took like almost a year for me to to actually um, come to the Lord. And um, I was back and forth. And as I was going back and forth, the ministry was growing bigger and bigger. And then um, I couldn't really understand whether God was real or not. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I, I tested like, I was like, man, if, if you're a real God or like, I need to see something. Um, as I keep coming back, um, I could always feel um, this peace around this group of people. And then um, there was a pastor, Pastor Bethy, um, back then, I think it was 2017. Mm -hmm. So he prayed for me and um, he asked the sisters to um, hold hands and then they, they went into a circle and I was in the middle and they asked, um, they just prayed for me. And as they were praying for me, um, I just felt this huge presence upon me and um, I saw a vision. So I saw a pair of hands and um, it really brought peace to me. And I just, I have never seen such light before. I've never had felt such peace. And I knew that there was uh, a God out there that that's trying to reach to me, but I, I couldn't uh, comprehend. I just couldn't understand um, what was going on um, with my life. And so at the time I was pressured with, um, I was doing police at the time. Um, I was um, I was doing I was playing sports, and uh, I was a relationship at the time, and I was also working at the time, and I was only like nineteen. <laughs> so yeah, um, I was pressured from every area of my life, and I wasn't succeeding um, in any of it. And so for me, um, the people that I went to. They look like they had it all together, but it's like they had this um, this peace that I wanted. They had this. Um, there was always something about them, and I wanted it for myself. But I still couldn't believe whether God was real. Mm. And so um, later on, I was at I actually I was at the library, and I was just thinking and meditating, like where's my life going? Um, and as I was failing that year, and every in every area of my life, I I kind of just sat there and cried in the library, and this voice just um, stood out and said to come, and I I knew, like, I knew that they that um that there is a God out there, um, and and so like I I actually took a chance, um like growing up i was always sick and so i always look for cure to my sickness and a lot of fear and i keep going to the doctors um i tried searching in churches um, my mom keep um she kept looking at different medicines like um she'll go to different denominations just to find a cure for for the sickness that i had and then um, when I did come to the understanding, like, man, I'm just gonna faith it and go with what I heard. I I decided that I'm just gonna try this out. I'm just gonna try Jesus out. I'm, like, yeah, I just thought, you know, I'll just try this out and wherever it leads to me, like wherever it leads me, um, as long as I've, I've tried every area. Um, Cause I actually like, I had no more hope, like doctors didn't know, no one knew, and I was training my life away. And so, so yeah, I decided to to take, to to just really take the sleep of, of taking God's way. <laughs> yeah. So um, did you go to church before? Um, yeah, uh, I went to church. So um, was it a Tongan church? Like what kind of church was it? Like a Methodist or um, Sestonga church? 
Yeah, it was a Siastong so church. So it's a Tongan church, yes. So, um, so how come you didn't change in, in that church? How come your um, it took you to be saved outside? Um, when I attended church, I I only knew that there was a God, like a knowledge, as in there's a loving God. So I'm like, oh, it would explain why, because I obviously didn't understand what, like looking around whether God exists and stuff, I knew that there would be a creator. And for me, going to church, um, everyone was always um, like mean to each other. Like they didn't show the love that the word said that God is love. And so um, I knew when I met these group of people that there was the love of God that I knew and knowledge that, okay, there is a God. So you, so you never saw um, the love of God in your church? No, no. So you saw them discipling people to the church, but not to Jesus, right? Yeah, it was all about um, numbers. Um, it was all about um, seeing who has a bigger church or how many people is in your church. But there was no, there was no love. Um, like we'll go into the church and sing songs and do activities, but as soon as we came out, there was always um, gossip, and there was no, like, no one to look up to whether the word of God was real or not. That's amazing. So, so when you saw when you were in church, you just went there for roll call. It's more just to go there because it's like a, it's because your parents told you to go. Yeah, yeah. And and you had no understanding. Did they teach you to read the Bible or anything like that? Or um, yeah, they did some Sunday school, mm -hmm. um, but I never understood that. I never understood that you can be a new creation. I never mm -hmm. understood that you can have a relationship with God. It's pretty crazy, yeah. eh? Because that's like me. Like a lot of um, churches out there, uh, especially the Pacific Islander churches. I'm not saying they're all like that, but um, they they focus on more on culture. And tradition and, and about pleasing man and and a lot of the children don't know don't know jesus because they're focusing on um, building the church and not building the, the congregation you know what i mean pushing them to jesus and and god bless you son so um when you came to jesus um how was your family were, were they happy about that about you coming to another church um i actually uh, i never got persecuted yep. um they were actually okay with it. So the mindset my parents had was, as long as you go to church, mm -hmm. um, every church is the same. Mm -hmm. um, so they were all good with me coming That's to awesome. the ministry. Yeah. Um, what happened for when ever since you came to Jesus? Um, has there been changes in your family? Yeah, um, a lot. Yes, so there's been a lot of that. changes. Mm -hmm. um, so growing up in my family, like. There's always grew up in a, a violent or just I always had an expectation on um, my siblings and my parents. Um, but when I left it to the Lord, He had really um, He really showed the um, He really showed His love and His power through my parents. He mm -hmm. used my parents um, with my mom. Um, she came down to ministry um, her first time at ministry. Um, she, we got into prayers and she got um, prayers of her sister. And so with her, she, um, she said like she was buzzed out. She's never heard the voice of God before. Okay. And, and she, she came to me. So as when we got home, she said to me, she said, um, Sana, I've, I've heard, I heard the Lord. I heard the Lord speak to me. And I was like, but I know my mom, like, when it comes to the Lord, like she's stubborn, like she's like, I, I already know I've been to church. I, I go to church all the time, every Sunday. But this time she was really like shocked. She was like, the Lord spoke to me and said to me to, um, to, to fix my heart, to mm. work towards knowing him. And um, the second time she came to ministry, to ministry um, in the middle of worship. So in the middle of worship, um, so I didn't know at the time, but, when she explained to me, she said in the middle of worship, um, she felt uh, a hand touch her knee. So my mom had been suffering this knee injury for 15 years. Wow. 
and her whole family, her whole siblings been telling her to go get an operation. It's a whole genetic thing because um, a lot of her siblings had got an operation on their knees. Mm. But something um, she'd been telling me, she because she's so stubborn, she doesn't listen to anyone. That's what made her not take that um, take that path. And for the Lord to heal her um, in the middle of worship, mm. um, really did really did open her eyes that that there, it is possible to have that relationship with God. It's yeah. amazing. Your mom got healed. Yeah. So in doing worship, your mom got healed and she went and told your family at home. Yeah. So she was excited. My sisters are a bit like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she came home. But um, she was telling my dad. She told my dad first and my dad didn't believe it. About the healing? Um, about the healing mm -hmm. on her knee. Mm -hmm. And my dad, and so she like kind of got up and she was like swinging her leg and she's like, Look, look. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I so said, my dad didn't believe it. My dad was just like, oh, God on you. And he started laughing at her. And um, I, uh, it's just their, their relationship. But um, so yesterday, and so she got healed. And so she's been um, in her word. She's been um, um, looking in deeper into having a relationship with God. Um, praise the Lord. And then my dad yesterday, mm -hmm. um, so he's been sick for the last couple of days. And then um, my sister got sick mm -hmm. and then I've got two sisters and then my other sister got sick and uh, I was seeking the Lord and I had a call from one of my sisters to rush home uh, to take my dad. He was running out of breath to the hospital. To the hospital. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, okay, um, sweet. And then I went, I rushed to home and um, as I was at home, everyone was like rattling, like who's taking him, what not. Um, and just like normal family things, like hurry up, hurry up. And I was like, oh yeah, all so good, everyone all good. Was panicking. Yeah, panic mode, yeah. <laughs> panic mode. And then um, I just told my dad, okay, um, we'll go. And then as we went in the car, um, I told him we're gonna stop first at the big doctors. And then he was like, oh, where's the big doctors? And then I just shared with them, we'll stop at the field, um, we'll go see Jesus. <laughs> oh, nice. And then we went over to, um, the to the park. And then as we went over down to the park, we started, we prayed for each other. Um, and then I prayed for him and I laid hands on him. And then I just asked the Lord just to bring healing over him. And then um, after I finished praying, he didn't open up his eyes. He was still, his eyes were still closed. And I was wondering like, oh, okay. Um, the Lord is doing something with him. And then he opened his eyes and he just looked at me like something happened. And I, I knew, like I knew that in, like, in that moment, I knew God, God touched him. And then he just said to me like, um, like he wanted to just cry. He just said to me, um, because he ran out of breath and he couldn't breathe for the last couple of days, he said um, there, there was a hand that just touched his chest wow. and just really um, just wiped off that that just yeah just kind of like just brushed off that pain in his chest and mm. he was able to breathe again mm. um and that was the first time my dad had ever had an encounter with the power of god wow and yeah did you really um think that god will move will move this quick in your family no actually no uh, i honestly thought i'd die i actually <laughs> i actually thought like you're dying yeah, you're like no like i thought i'd die and then then they'll finally listen down. <laughs> <laughs> then they'll understand the God that I'm serving. But honestly, um, yeah, God moved quicker than I thought. Uh, yeah. I remember the first time when I got your mom to dance. That's the first time you were touched. Yeah, I was touched. Um, so I've always seen my mom dance at church functions and everything. But when she danced at this time, I just Jesus. knew yeah. that she was actually just worshipping for the Lord. Yeah. yeah. Man, it's amazing to see what God has done in your in your family. Just for anyone out there that is struggling with their family coming to the Lord, I encourage you guys that God, He's faithful. You know what I mean? If He's a work in you, He's a work in your family. I know a lot of people that's watching today that God has done an awesome work in their family. Uh, just trust Him. I mean, my family, my family is still coming. They're not completely in the Lord yet, but my job is just to trust Him and, and let God do the rest. Um, but it's amazing because Sana noticed that the God's doing a massive work in your mum and dad. Yeah. And I remember Sana showed me a video of um of her dad testifying of what God had done in his life. It's amazing. Maybe Sana put on the page later on. Um, but 
it's it's amazing. I, I believe a lot of Tongan men and Tongan and, and Tongan men and women older. I think they need to see this because a lot of people go to church, but it's more of a program. You know, what I mean, go to church, sit there, sing the hymn, sit there, next verse, and then and then finish off church, and then go go outside, and that's their church. But what what they're missing out is the power of God and and, and seeing the relationship in in what God is doing, and that's what Sana is sharing. A lot of our parents don't know God yet, and I mean, it's sad, but but we have to trust that God will move. And the only way that God can move is through you. And that's what we're testifying. Um, you being a light at your house, you just not being moved by the circumstance and you just trusting every battle that we go through. But um, that will come, but you have to be patient and you have to be consistent in your walk. Because the enemy, if he, if he makes you fall away, that's a big delay, you know what I mean? And God wants you to be saved and he doesn't want you to be a distraction to your family. And this is something that we're, we're sharing today what God has done in Sana's life. Honestly, like Sana was a really shy person. She never used to sing before. Like um, when she came to the Lord, she would never sing or dance. And now what she does now, she sings and she dances, and it's beautiful. And I love it when, when someone does it from the heart to God. And a lot of people used to say to me, man, who's that girl singing and dancing? I go, man, can I tell you something? That's the first time. And, and it's encouraging for people to really see the light in your life and just to um, to come to Jesus. So um, I want to ask you also, Sana, um, what kind of person were you in the world? Uh, so um, <laughs> so before you came to God, what kind of person were you? Like, what would you describe yourself? <clears throat> like, what kind of people that, like, when people knew you, what did they know you, what was your character to them? Um, no ears. No ears? Uh, well, meaning, meaning not listen? You yeah, don't listen? Yeah, I wouldn't listen to anyone. Yeah. Um, I I just I just hated everything. I hated everything. Did you have did you just have a other car as well? Yeah, I used to shave my hair, uh, yeah. different uh hairstyle. I had heaps of hairstyles. Um I try to fit in with this world. Yeah. Um yeah, whatever the trend was, like I followed. <laughs> yeah. So what was like the addictions did you have in the world? Um addictions um I wouldn't say alcohol was an addiction. I was just um I was trying to look for something that would, I was trying to actually look for something that would fit me. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think my addiction was just training, eh? mm-hmm. um, a lot of physical training. So is that the reason why you train so much? Like how, how bad was your training? Oh man, I used to train um, like three times a day. Mm-hmm. Um, like, yeah, before work, after work. Um, and then after another training session, I'll stay for another session and then I'll have dinner. Oh, sorry. And then I'll train again and then I'll have dinner. Yeah, it was just a lot. So I had a lot. was training like something that you take your mind off everything else? Yeah. Um, the, I love the adrenaline. Yeah. Um, I love the sweat. Um, just get to take uh, my anger out, um, mm. my frustration, confusion. Um, I believe every trainer and like they anyone who does any sport like whatever you face like it's like it's like us i don't know like whatever i was going through um whether it was fear or um, pressure um i just i just went and trained and as and when i finished training i just felt good mm-hmm. like it really just kind of uh, brush off um everything that i was facing mm-hmm. so yeah. now uh, um, how often do you train now oh like hardly ever yeah it's because um, it gave you gave your yeah. weight to the Lord or? Yeah, yeah, no, so like training was like my comfort. Yeah. Um training was like it was like um like me and the weights forever. <laughs> yeah. And then now I came to the Lord. Um the peace that training gave to me is like it's not com- like comparing it to what God has given me now and what I have now, it's it's far more greater than what I thought. The peace of God would be, and so now that I have this peace, I I just rely on the Lord and the Holy Spirit gives me that peace, and I could also go through like because we still go through problems and stuff. Like it doesn't mean we can't overcome, but like it's it's more different. Like 
I can depend on the Lord, like whatever I go through, like um, says in Peter, to cast your cares upon him for he cares for you. And so when I have that relationship with God, I know that I know that he's able to take that burden, um, mm. those burdens away from me. And so I'm able to, um, I didn't have to go back to training. I didn't have to look back into thinking that I was something. I know who mm. I am now. So, yeah, so before, when you used to get angry and stuff, you used to go to training and push it all in the training. But the difference yeah. now, you actually go to God. Yeah. And sit down and, and laying, that, laying out all your problems. Yeah. So a lot of people out there, they used to use training to 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 comfort them. And that's what you're saying, right? Yeah. And now you find your true confidence in Jesus Christ. And it's amazing just to encourage everyone out there that Jesus is, the, the Bible says that, um, you know, the word of God will give us comfort. Jesus says he'll give us a comforter. And, and the Spirit's here today to comfort us through our struggles and through our challenges. So in your work, Sana, what kind of challenges have you been through? Uh, like challenges, like what kind of challenges, yeah, what you've been through in, in your walk? Um, I've been through through heaps of challenges. Yeah. Um, like what? Like, uh, like, um, um there's, there's there times that you got angry, you just want to walk away from God. Is there times uh, that you want to give up? You know, yeah, it, there you was know? heaps of challenges where, um, where I thought, like, I thought I heard the voice of God, um, and <coughs> I started to go in my own understanding. And um, it was challenging because um, uh, I had a lot of mind battles. I, I feared a lot of people's opinions. And so I actually didn't want to leave God, but I just, I was just uh, challenged, being confused. Mm -hmm. um, challenges like um, going by your own desires. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, did you have a partner back then? Oh, yes, I did. Mm -hmm. um, challenges in in that area. Um, so, like, why did you? Uh, so, you still your partner now? Or uh, no, uh, no, okay. not with him. Um, it was challenging. Um, I think that was one of the challenging things I had to face uh, mm -hmm. being in the Lord. Um, when I started reading more in depth of the Word of God, mm -hmm. I didn't want to bend God's word. Um, I didn't want this peace to leave me. Mm -hmm. um, when I did get baptized. Um, the day after um, this massive peace fell upon me and I woke up and I knew I've never had such rest. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, like um, it was hard. Eh? It was really hard, um, but I just knew that I couldn't, I didn't want to be in God's word, that's mm. all. I just didn't want to do so it. So when you came to God, you actually cut away all distractions. Um, so when you came to God, like you said, you had things that you, you knew you had to let go of, and that's why yeah. you had to let go. Yeah. Because there was a weight in your walk. Um, yeah, I couldn't focus in, in the Lord. Um, it's like I had to choose um, Him over God. Uh, I couldn't mm. really, I couldn't find the balance. You're just talking about the partner, or who are you talking about? Yeah, my partner okay, yeah. at the time. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Oh, so he, that time, is he, was he saved? Uh, no, it wasn't okay. safe. So it's, um, it's amazing just for people that's listening, um, we're just sharing certain people came to the Lord to have partners and, and she, when she came to the Lord, she knew that she had to, um, do, um, serve him. You know I mean, and then, you know I mean, I guess your partner didn't want to change. Um, your partner wanted to change like you know i'm just sharing like uh, with people that had partners people that has partners that came to the lord uh what what what, what should they do you know when people come to the lord with their partners like uh if they thought believe asking if you if you believed in the lord or not sorry what was like that? your partner did he believe in the lord um his heart was hardened towards uh, yeah. the lord yeah. um yeah he had his own um his own reason to blame God, but it stopped them from actually knowing him. Okay, so that's what that was the struggle because he didn't want you to serve the Lord. Um, or he did. No, he did. Yeah, and there was so. What was the challenges in that when you were with him? What was the challenges for you to focus on the Lord and if him was it hard because he was? Oh, it was hard because um, I fell into sin. 
Okay, yeah. so there's so a lot of temptations being yeah, with him. There was a lot of temptations. Okay, so that's what we're sharing today, just asking this. If people that has partners that's not confident and you believe if he doesn't want to get married or anything like that, but he just wants to be in a relationship, just the challenges you go through, uh, temptation, and just be careful in that area. But Sana chose to um, to move forward. And um, if anyone that's listening that has partners now, like just keep them in prayer and 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 pray that they come to the Lord. Okay, um, so for you come to the Lord, um, what kind of miracles have you witnessed in your life? So, I want to share this. So. Yes, so um, <laughs> what kind of miracles have you seen God do in your life? Oh, I've seen heaps. Yeah. This is how good God is. This is how real the Lord that I serve. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen him heal people come out of crutches. Yeah. Um, people just come out of their chairs. Um like walking chairs type okay, of walking chairs. Uh, walking chairs i've seen people heal um instantly mm-hmm. um even at work people at work can testify um that the lord had healed their knee uh, from a fresh injury mm-hmm. um people who have healed their sickness so mm-hmm. people come to work sick um they they can testify um uh, that the lord is real and they healed them like straight away mm-hmm. um they were really um really shocked they were really really um surprised um that that the that god can actually heal um i've uh, seen him yeah all physical pain like back pain i've seen him heal different like i've seen so many healings is this through yeah. your hands like praying for people yeah god is just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing yes. The reason we're saying this is because it's, uh, Jesus says in Mark 16, lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And, and that's why we're sharing today, like um, testifying, because God is not just something that is just read in the book, but he's actually alive today. And um, I remember Sana, there was a video in Mangri, he prayed for a Tongan man that had a that couldn't walk. Actually, so it was, was it me, and, um, yeah. uh, me and a sister. Yeah. Um, Isadora. Yeah. Hi, Isadora. Yeah. So me and Isadora, we went to um, Mangri. Um, they were over from Oz. And so we just went and got some lunch. And um, this man came past and Isadora wanted to pray for him. And he he rejected us both. Um, mm-hmm. We came back around and um, I just went up to him and I realized he was Tongan. And so I got to minister to him in Tongan. And he was more open to receive the prayers. And I knew... Um, Isadora was the first that was her first appointment so I was like oh, oh I asked him if it was okay for um our sister Isadora to lay hands and so Isadora laid hands on her um and uh, on, on him sorry and then um as she was praying for him like we all just lifted up our hands um and I just oh man I was crying that was the first time I've ever witnessed God's um power oh, yeah. and so I was crying because I knew that this is how much God loved like not just him but he showed a love that i've never seen before and he was in crutches and he he left, walking. yeah oh he left with just he didn't realize like he was walking um with his crutch like not using it he was just walking with it mm-hmm. and but in the midst of god healing him our uh, god healing him there was a massive crowd mm-hmm. and that massive crowd also got to witness him walking off um with his um leg healed wow this is a memory this is a memory town center <laughs> and, people, and, and people crowded around to watch this um, miracle happen. Yeah. How did the Tonga react? Um, he was crying. And really, was the Tonga thank- was crying. Yeah. yeah. And he was thanking us both. Um, so I just in- just shared with the sisters in English, mm. and he was just thanking us like, "Oh man, God is real." Um, yeah. That, that's amazing to to see older Tongan men to cry. Yeah. And I mean, it's something that um we share. We were sharing like a lot of I know um. Our older our parents and the older people, Tongan, Samoan, whatever, they usually don't listen to the young ones, you know, they're like, oh, he's, who are you? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I was reading the Bible when you were in nappies. But honestly, it's true. When God sees sees you moving and, 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 and moving in the power of God, man, he got healed and he cried. Mm-hmm. And that's hard for a, a man, a, a Tongan man, to, to, to open his heart like that unless God done something you know what i mean he said he hasn't walked like, did he tell you how long he hasn't walked for 
Um, no. But he said he hasn't walked. Um, he couldn't walk. He couldn't walk for a long time. Yeah. Wow! Well, and seeing God touch him and he's walking, and that's what we're testifying today, guys. Like um, we're living testimony, and what she's seen in her own eyes, and you've seen a lot of miracles, right? Yeah, I've seen heaps, and I've seen people confused because of God moving in them. <laughs> yeah, man. It's awesome. That's why we're here to testify, man. Like um, God's amazing, and all you have to do is just believe, right? Yep. Like when you when you prayed for that man, what did you do? Did you do some like, tongues or jump mm. around? Or, <laughs> or what did you do? Like, what do you pray for the man? Um, I just laid my hands. I just did what the word of God said. Mm -hmm. um, just lay your hands. And I just asked the Lord just to heal him. And just lay, ask the Lord just, yeah. Just that, simple that, prayer. That was it. Yeah. And he let go and he was completely healed. Yeah, instantly too. Yeah. Man, it's awesome. And that's what I was sharing today. Yeah. Uh, God's power, man. It's, it's, it's not about... <clears throat> um, how long you pray for is not um, it's not what you do is but simple faith and, and when you pray for him you believe that was going to happen yeah i actually really believed it was going to happen before we went there oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yes mm. simple faith yeah so encourage everyone out there man like uh read the gospel and, and understand your authority in christ and this is the power that um it says in the bible that greater is he that's in us than him that's in the world. And you know what I mean? It's not Sana or Tui's power. It's the power of God, man. And, and God is waiting for us to move in his faith. I mean, um, so we talked about temptations. We talked about the power. We talked about how your family came. Uh, we talked about um, your partner, uh, your ex-partner. We talked about um, your old church and what changed. Um, how long have you been walking for today? Um, going on three years. Three years, and in those three years, was it has it been easy? No, no. When? No. Um, the flesh <laughs> always wants to do what what it wants to do. Mm -hmm. Um, but it says that the spirit is always willing. Yeah. So while Sana sharing, like the reason why she said it's it's a, it's a challenging walk, three years is because of the enemy. We're always trying to take, tempt you with distractions, right? Yeah. But do you, is it worth it? Yeah, it's worth it. Why is it worth it, walking in Christ? Because, honestly, because the world can't give what Christ can give. Mm -hmm. The world couldn't fulfill what what God is fulfilling right now. You'll never be ready unless you come to Christ. Mm. Amen. And and how are, we, how are you, like, you being saved? How confident are you? Confident of you being saved today? I'm a hundred percent. Why? hundred percent. And that's why we preach the gospel because we're a hundred percent. That's why we share the power because we're a hundred percent. So, um, so you did count the price before you started walking? Um, the cost? Honestly, yeah. no. Yeah. I didn't, I, I didn't know anything about count the cost. But you only I knew, just knew through, through seeing. Yeah, I just mm. knew like, I had no, nothing else to try. I've tried everything. I had no more hope. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to And this is the it. only thing that you found that actually answered you. Yeah. And it was Jesus. Yeah. Wow. I encourage everyone out there, man. Just have a listen. And um, I guess my last question now. Um, what's your encouragement to the brethren that's watching today? What encouragement would you give them? Anyone that's struggling or going through anything, um, what would you say to uplift them? Um, don't forget. Mm -hmm. don't, don't forget. Don't forget what God has done. Wow. Yeah. Simple like that, eh? And, and that's what we were sharing today. Um, I think that is true. You know what I mean? Like, if, it's, if you're struggling in your walk, remember why you first came, because you needed him. You know, it's, a lot of people come to God, it's because they want something. And then when God answers their prayer, they go away from God. So they only come to God is when they want something. But God is not like that. God wants you in the good times and the bad times. He wants you to be saved. He wants to wash you and he wants to challenge you. And this is why God allows us to go through challenges because he wants us to grow. He wants us to grow in our faith and he wants us to be strong in our faith. So I praise the Lord. Um, in For anyone that's watching, um, does anyone have any questions for us, for me and Sana? before we go into worship.
anyone's watching, if you have any questions, um, even about Sana's testimony, you're more than welcome to ask um, before, God, before we get into worship. <laughs> but it's awesome to um, it's awesome to get Sana today to share. I know she has a testimony that can encourage anyone out there. Uh, seeing the power of God, see her family come to the Lord. Uh, everyone has different testimonies. Everyone has different uh, circumstances they go through. Uh, but we're here just to testify that Jesus can heal you today. So if there's anyone here that's, um, that has any questions, uh, please ask. Uh, we'd love to answer your questions. If not, we'd love to get into worship. Um, but like I said before, the sound won't be that great because of the live. I think it, it goes, the sound goes, uh, the audio goes in and out. But we'll just um, try our best to um, worship. Okay, Christian asked a question. Um, how did you overcome your shyness? Um, <coughs> I, um, <clears throat> I just... Do you put yourself in areas? I just put, yeah, I just put myself in areas where I was uncomfortable. Anything you ever came? Yeah. And that's it. Like, I think that's what someone shared. Like, if you're uncomfortable, just just walk. Just walk and God, just do the stuff that you'd be uncomfortable with. And you overcome. But if you run away from stuff that you're uncomfortable with, you'll never overcome because you're running away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Emily asked, three years is a long time. Why do you still walk? Oh, I think that, yeah, I still walk because I I'm, I still remember what God has done for yeah. me. And you're still, and she's still growing in her walk? Yeah. And, I mean, God is still the same yesterday to, and, um, forever. And we're here just to testify about that. Because if we walk, if we're walking for three years and we fall away because of a circumstance, then we only follow God because of feelings. You know what I mean? I come to God because it feels good, and then when something goes bad, then you want to go away. Our walk, our walk is not like that. Our walk with Christ, we don't only come in the good time, in the, in the good times. We come to God in the bad times and the good times, and that's why people are forgetting. They only come to God when they want, when they want something. Okay. Um, what advice would you give someone who wants to give their life to the Lord, but they're scared of what family and and friends gonna say? Man. Tell them to uh, to not fear what their family says. And I mean, honestly, if you the advice I would give them is to follow Jesus. Read the Bible and, and, and follow Jesus. You know, I mean that's what Sana said that she had a choice. Um were you surprised that your family let you go to church? Yeah. yeah. Um I was surprised that because my dad's uh my dad preaches at the Tongan church. Mm -hmm. So um when I gave my life to the Lord, um he wasn't there, so I knew he was um, a bit pissed off, like he wasn't happy about it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was surprised when I did get home. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't really say much, but he didn't treat me any different. Okay, cool. So um, next question is, what do you love the most about being in the Lord? Um, honestly, I love, I love it when people overcome. Mm -hmm. um, it, it encourages me. Mm -hmm. Addis asks, did you try to persuade your partner to walk with God too? If you did and it failed, why? Did you try to persuade your partner? Did to you try to bring God? did you try to bring the Lord? Um, no, there was no persuasion. It was more of just trying to make him understand like this I found the answer to everything. Like, and you're trying to yeah. share I was just with trying him. to share with him, but I just realized it was too much. Um So you yeah. didn't want to listen? Um he just yeah, he just it was too much for him. Yeah. So just, yeah. and then he then did it fail? Or like it failed because you're trying to push. Um. Yeah. I I failed because I I try to push too much. Yeah. Um. Just to make him understand that there is there is a better way to yeah. um, life. And then uh, is that when you made the choice to just just um follow the Lord and just let go? Um. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess what Sana said, she made a choice that um, she could have stayed with the partner. You had the choice to stay with the partner. Yeah, um, I have a choice. Yeah, yeah. But she, the Lord didn't force me to yeah. do anything. Yeah, yeah. She did. She had a choice, but she chose to just let go. Like she just wanted to follow God, and she didn't want any distractions on the side. That's why she she let go of the partner. So hopefully that answers your question, Addis. <coughs> 
what what's a scripture that had encouraged you to stand strong in the Lord? Um, How some look at There's so many scriptures. Yeah, so many. Oh, the whole uh, Bible. <laughs> the whole Bible. <laughs> but, but which one, like, I don't know, is there, is there one that stands out to you this week? Oh, this week? Uh, Romans 6 always stands out. Yeah. Which part of Romans 6? Um, verse 7. Yeah. Um, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Amen. Amen. So if you are dead, you are free from sin. Mm-hmm. But you're alive, you're a sinner. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, um, just to encourage people out there to understand that Jesus. Um, I think the question is like, um, what do you mean by dead? Meaning you have to leave your old life behind. You have to move forward and move as a new creation. And that's something that God is doing. Um, Puni, what was the most hardest thing for you that you had to change? What was the hardest thing for you to change to let go when you came to Christ? Um, yeah, it was my partner. Puni, your answer was her partner. Um, Trishan, is gymming a stumbling <laughs> block for you? Can you be a Christian and still work out? Um, at first. Um, oh wait, is gymming a stumbling block? Gym, yeah. Oh no, not really. Um, I just had to renew my mind and why I used to train and why I train now, but there's no change and yeah. um, there's no stumbling block whatsoever. Mm. Um, can you be a Christian and still work out? Yeah, you can. The Bible says it profits a little, mm. but something I asked myself was why would I want to turn to something that only profits a little? Yeah. Um, so and, yeah. all, godliness. And godliness profits all. Yeah. yeah, so that's in 1 Timothy 4. It talks about um, uh, bodily exercises profits little, but um, exercising onto godliness is more, way better. You know what I mean, yeah. it profits all things. So it's amazing. Um, for them that works out, there's nothing wrong. You know what I mean? But as long as it doesn't become a distraction, anything can become a distraction to you. This can be a distraction. <laughs> you know I mean, this can be a distraction. <laughs> This can be a distraction. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> any anything can be a distraction. I mean, like um, by just sharing anyone, even Facebook can be a distraction. By just sharing um, it's it's not a sin, but just be careful that anything that you have doesn't take your focus away from God. So that's what um um, uh, Sana was sharing that there was times when she struggled in her walk with those distractions. Um. Lupe, what, what what's the advice for someone to lose body fat? Oh yeah. Okay. Um, fast and pray. Fast and pray <laughs> and self control. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, uh, honestly, honestly, if, if you want to lose body fat, um, I've seen people, uh, I've seen people um, became become so focused on losing weight, yeah, but they forgot like um. If you're in spirit, the God usually teaches you to have self control, and that's part of the fruit of the spirit. You know what I mean, and, and that's something that you um, honestly, people you try to burn it off with exercise. I mean, I've seen sisters in Christ that lost so much weight from just fasting and praying. Man, that's crazy. I've seen so, like, honestly, that's <laughs> testified my sister behind me, Lille. I mean, like, um, sister Lille, that girl, man, was you can see so much weight lost, it's because of her fasting and praying. And and I tell you, the reason why we fast and pray is to kill our insecurities. Amen? The reason why we fast and pray, because when we fast, it kills our insecurities so we can focus on what, what we really need, and that's us focusing onto God. You know what I mean? And, and that's something that encourages anyone um, out there that's watching, that he loves you. How many promise, uh, Bible promises are there? Well, Man, I haven't counted yet, but Jesus, you know, he talks about in Abraham and it goes all into the New Testament. Jesus said, because he ever believes, we'll have this. I know there's so many. Um, but versus knowledge, nah, I don't know. I, I can't uh, count. But Jesus does promise that he's the way and the truth and the life. Mm-hmm. He's the only way to the Father. He said, if you don't believe I am here, you will die in your sins. Uh, Jesus says that where your treasure is is where your heart will be. Jesus said if you don't come to him, you know I mean, like he will give you rest. You know, it's it's all over the Bible, his promise. And he talks about Ephesians, um, about the victory for Jesus. You know, there's so much promises that you know, Jesus come unto me and he will he will bless you. 
um, <coughs> so, but it's 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 amazing. Um, I think that most important the most important promise is being born again. You know, Jesus says, um, for you to enter the kingdom of God, you must be born again. You know what I mean? And that's you being a new creation. You can't think the old way. You kind of think the new way. So, um, um, cat. Praise Lord, Kat. Um, I remember someone asked us this question before. Um, what's some advice to get back in touch with God after falling away for so long? Oh, man. Kat, uh, someone asked us that question two days ago. And honestly, it's a, it's a the only way is to get back in touch is to get back on your knees. Get back and get back to your knees and start praying to God. Okay, God, help me in my walk. And, and now is the time where you have to deny yourself and start sowing into the spirit I, I know it's hard sometimes when you come to the lord and then you say i don't feel it i don't feel it if you've been sowing to the flesh for two years or three years obviously you'll reap corruption so all you think is like flesh 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 because the flesh only cares for the things of the flesh but for you to come back to christ you need to sow back into the spirit and you'll reap everlasting so it's it's gonna take process for you to come. Is honestly, um, if you come like one day and you and you backslid for a long time, obviously you're connected to you connect to God. You slowly get back up. You start to slowly um feel the presence of the Lord, but it has to be continually. Does it make sense? Like, oh, I felt it for that day, and the next day is like, oh, I don't feel like walking. No, you have to sow against the spirit. You have to start walking what the Bible says, and that's what we would encourage is to continue to sow. Um, don't give up because Jesus says to deny yourself and pick up your cross and follow him. Deny yourself. <laughs> so God bless you, Kat. Um, the only way um, I can encourage you is Jesus loves you. His arms are, is always open for you. Or for anyone, anyone that's fallen away. If anyone has fallen away, remember the, uh, the, the son that fell away, the story of the son that fell away for years. And when he came back, the father ran to him and, and his arms were still open. And the son was surprised that he still forgave him. And he gave him the best calf, gave him the ring, blessed him with a massive feet. And and God loves us. And, and I mean, if I fell away in my walk, um, you know I mean? There, there's condemnation to them. You know I mean, like there's no condemnation to them that's in Christ. But I believe if you're, if you're in flesh, there's lots of condemnations. Because when you're in the flesh, the enemy will just sow lies to your heart. So please be in the flesh. I mean, sorry, in spirit, and God can bless you. Um, um, we got advice, uh, Tommy. Hello, Lope. God bless you, sis. Tommy asks, my mom wants to know if you got baptized and you still have problems. Of course. Ipsy, <laughs> lipsy. Of course. Oh yeah. When so you want to share like um yeah, just don't uh, focus because uh, we're still in the flesh. We're not perfect yet. Yeah, we're, so still we're still in still a, we're still in, in this. You know what I mean? Problems. It says in the Bible that the flesh will always last against the spirit. So every time we walk in God, there will always be challenges. You know what I mean? But you have to learn to to yield yourself to the Word of God. So if you use, if you yield yourself to your to, to the lies, then obviously you gonna fall. But if you put yourself and listen to what what the Bible says, you will overcome. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Okay. Someone said to Sana, Asiana, reply to my text. Oh, sorry, bro. Um, uh, Tux, wait, bro. I'll see you tomorrow <laughs> at work. I know you missed me at work already, bro. But I'll come. <laughs> Um, God bless you, Tux. Um, don't worry, just enjoy, bro. I know you need me there. I, I miss your cooking, bro. Just um, come eat again. <laughs> uh, Lila, question for Sister Sana: Have you broke down, um, broke down baptism to your parents? Um, not a fully, not no, not fully. Um, that was actually something I was looking into today. Um, but I've given them um just a little to drink down. Mm. Yeah. Amen. So um, we'll get there. Yep. Yeah. Um, but your mom wanted to get baptized before, right? Um, she was mentioning baptism to your dad. Um, to my dad. Uh, this my, be, this yeah, before your dad got this touched. This is before my dad got touched, and my dad um was okay with her coming to ministry. And then when my mom shared with me that my dad let her come, I was like, oh, there must be something behind it. And she did share that 
he said, as long as you go, um, don't get baptized. <laughs> yeah. People, is, um, it's a bit weird, eh? People think that you get baptized, you get baptized into a church, into a Mormon church or Catholic church or mm-hmm. baptized into just Jesus ministry church. No, baptism is, is obedience. Jesus says to do it. You know what I mean? It's not being, you're not getting baptized to, to, um, to no one, to, to a church. You get baptized to him. It's a sign of obedience and you dying to yourself. You know what I mean? And that's what, the, it's a repentance of sin. I mean, uh, the remissions of sin, you going into the water and you just, that's it, man. That's, hope that answered your question, guys. Praise the Lord. Um, anyone got any more tough questions for Sana? Well, praise the Lord. Down, bro. Amen, man. Hey, Dao. Hey, who's the other person that said, was that Ariana? Oh, I don't know. Oh, it must have been. Must be his family. Oh man, but praise the Lord, guys. Um, <laughs> what day is it today? Sunday. Oh, yeah, bro. I am working tomorrow. Six. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> we'll go back and it's my job. I, I do youth work, and me, too, me and Tooks, we do the hardest work ever to sit in a hotel. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Leaks. <laughs> Predestination. Uh, <laughs> Jerusalem. Uh, Predestin- oh, I'm trying to answer all these questions. Um, so, Predestination. Um, if you don't know, study on Predestination. Have a look at it, read it, because that is a long, long topic. And you can argue about that topic all day, you know, about predestination. But um, we don't, we got, ain't no time for that. <laughs> we ain't got time for a big destination. Uh, we <laughs> only got time to to share the love of God Good night, for people to come to God. <laughs> um, Tristan, do you have the gift of um, healing? Like I say, it's Corinthians. No, Nickers. Um. I believe we all have the gift of healing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says we have the gift on everyone who believes that we heal the sick. Oh, Josh was right. Jesus was born in Mangri. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Reese, we'll, um, we will be singing a song soon. Um, we'll be singing a song after this. It's good, um, you know what I mean? Like a lot of people have good questions, but we want honest questions, like um, questions that that may edify the edify you guys. If there's anyone that's going through any hardships or if there's anyone going through um, just any real questions that we can help you guys with. I mean, uh, me and uh, Sada's been working for years and I've been working for a couple years as well. We're just here to encourage everyone just to, uh, that Jesus can help you guys in your walk. Um, I've been to Ghana. I've, I've, I've traveled to Ghana. I've, I've prayed there. I've also, a lot of testimonies out there. Um, been to like, um, a lot of places. A lot of my, uh, our church has been to Kenya, New Zealand, Australia, you know what I mean? Germany. But, but we try our best to, to be fruitful where we are, you know what I mean? And we're in New Zealand and we're going to try our best to, to, to do God's will in New Zealand. And yeah, it's amazing um, what God is doing. The church is slow, slowly growing. I praise God. Um, it's not about the numbers of the church. It's about you discipling people to Jesus Christ. So that's the most important thing. Amen. Nothing but the blood. Can you use an on Hebrews 12, 1 to 2? Uh, Lupe, can you elaborate, please? Um... Believe. 
Okay, he says um, Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, and he says, Therefore, let us also sing. Wait, I'll get another uh, version. Um, Therefore, seeing we also are com um, compassed about with so great kind of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily uh, beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the all and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the friend of God. Amen. Um, okay. So we have many witnesses. Uh, for us, when we run in the race, uh, God wants us to run to be freely. We run, don't want any weights or any distractions. Uh, with patience before us. So the witnesses, the kind of witnesses, I believe that could be angels. i uh, watching. It could be anything. But just understanding in a race, we're not in in a race. We're not meant to have any distractions. If I'm running, I'm not meant to have any weight or any anything that pushes me away from God. But it says here to look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So when, we, when we're running the race, your eyes should be on the finish line, and that should be on Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of our, of, our, of the race. So it says that the joy that was set before him, what was the joy? He says that the joy was the cross. And, and Jesus understood, in though he went through hardship in the cross, it was, it was a joyful thing for him because he knew the reason why for the cross because he's going to die for us and he done it for, for us. And also understanding that he despised the shame. Even though it was a shameful thing to die on the cross, it was embarrassing to do all that thing. He, he, he understood why he done it. And, he, and when he moved, moved forward, um, he humbled himself all the way to the end. So that's why he got glorified in Philippians chapter 2. That every name, his arm, every tongue, every knee will bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Um, but it's, it's amazing to see what God has done in our lives. Like understanding, um, I think the whole key for Hebrews chapter twelve is focus on Jesus. I mean, in every challenges we go through, is to put your focus on Jesus and die for yours. Um, Jason. Oh. Okay, I, I don't know. If we have quizzes. <laughs> okay, we'll go to Jason. <laughs> What is your encouragement to the Christians who struggle to share their faith everywhere and not just ministry, like work or school, even to our own first families? Sana, what's it? Oh, sorry. What is your encouragement to Christians who struggle to share their faith? Um, I think my encouragement would be um, to deny yourself. <laughs> To deny yourself and look at them just the way um, as Christ looked at you, that you needed, um, they, they needed a savior too. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the understanding. Like, don't, don't feed. Um, Jesus says, do not feed the what kills the body, but feed him that can kill the body and the soul and chuck it into hell. So that's what Jesus says. Just encourage them to not. It's not about us. You know what I mean, it's all about Jesus. And the only way you can ever come is actually what Sana said before. Just do it. When you move, then you overcome. If you got to sit there and think about it, you got to have a battle in your mind. Amen. Uh, or Phil, praise the Lord. Uh, Phil said, what would be your last message to share with the flock? My one? Uh, my last message, I think I'll share the same thing all the time. To love God. Honestly, to continue to deny yourself and love Jesus. Uh, to really hold on to Him and and honestly, the times we're in today, um, there's so much science with the coronavirus and everything that everyone's talking about. But I encourage everyone to, to put their focus on Jesus and deny themselves today. And don't let, let, don't let no circumstance stop you from stop you from come to stop you from moving forward with God. And we're just here to encourage everyone. If it was my last message, it's deny yourself and love Jesus. What would you be your last message? Um, yeah. Um, just remember what God has done. Yeah. Yeah. When you remember, yeah. Yeah, it's just something that it's um, it's amazing. Um. So when we go through um when we go through the challenges of um of dying or something, I think, even Apostle Paul says it in um, in Philippians. He says, "My heart desires to depart from this world and to be with Christ, which is way better." 
but I guess God has a his own God has his own time for him to go. So Paul says, I understand, but I have to be here to share to share the love, to share with the flock that it's his time. You know, he wants to depart and die to be with Christ, but it's it's way better. But he wants him to be here to share with us, to encourage us to have the same heart, is to pursue God's heart. Yeah, amen. It was Peter. Yeah. But um, <laughs> oh man, um, do we get rewards for answering the right question? Or <laughs> yes, yeah, it's like a quiz. But in one man, it's amazing what God has done, man. Like um, uh, yeah. praise the Lord. Um, we're probably getting to worship now. But if anyone has uh, another question, um, any questions that you encourage a brethren out there, um. Jesus actually rebuked the Pharisees mm. for holding the tradition of man because some some of the tradition came against the word of God. You know what I mean? And the, and so the Pharisees were doing all these like certain things like you should do this way, wash your hands, do this. They had all this new doctrine and and, and God. And Jesus had to rebuke them because all too well you choose to um, to deny God by keeping your tradition. I think tradition is okay, but when it becomes a when it becomes a it comes against the word of God, that's when it's wrong. And I mean, um, I can say also for Tongans, uh, in our tradition we have the gaba, you know, the drinking the gaba, and you know what I mean. And people usually drink that and get drunk, you know what I mean. But the Bible says the drunkards will not enter the kingdom of God. And a lot of the things that we, we do in, in our culture, we have to be careful. Uh, be careful what you do. And that's why I don't follow, I don't follow culture, my tradition. I actually follow Jesus all the way. You know what I mean? And if someone chooses to wear like a dog valor or something, that's fine. But be careful that your tradition tells you to do something that actually didn't, told you to do something to against the word of God. And that's what Jesus says. Um, all, well, all, all too well you choose to keep the tradition of man that you reject the word of God. So um, just focus on, on Jesus alone. That's what Jesus says, need to die. I think that's the key word, you need to die. If you're, if you're dead, that means culture should be dead as well. You need to be born again. If, you, if you're born again, your culture must be dead. Your tradition of men must be dead. Everything in the world must be dead. It means you need to follow Christ wholeheartedly. Amen. That's something I want to share. That's, that's what it means, a new creation. It means you're not meant to have the same mind that you used to do. You can't you can't serve two masters. You only can serve one. So just here, just to encourage everyone. I know some people be like, oh, but it's not a sin to keep this. Okay, up to you. But be careful that that doesn't become a stumbling block in your walk. And that's what we're sharing today. The sun up, actually the gym and stuff. The gym is not it's not a sin, but it can be a distraction. Um, what will be your encouragement for someone who wants their faith increased? Um, Increase in their walk with God. Sama? Um, I think I think the same thing we've just been sharing is to um, continue to deny yourself. Um, I think it talks about in Romans, um, faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Um, if you are hearing the word of God, then you would be growing, but that comes with you denying yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's just something we, we could just encourage everyone is to um, understand that this is the battle that we'll go through. Uh, walking by faith higher. It says faith comes by hearing. And faith comes by hearing the word of God. Um, so, <laughs> finish this verse. In every battle, you will need faith as your something to stop the three arrows aimed at you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I, think that's, I think that's in Ephesians 6. Faith? Ephesians 6. Faith? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but this is a, a different version. Yeah. 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 So, so uh, probably, uh, what translation are you using? <laughs> yeah, so uh, faith as your shield to stop the fiery arrows. Yeah. Okay. How important is, is it not to be un. So, how important is it not to be unequal yet? 
not to be unequally yoked. Well, um, Jesus says to, um, no, sorry, Paul says to not be unequally yoked with unbelievers, meaning um, when you come to God, you're meant to not to hang around the same people anymore. You know what I mean? Like, um, uh, you're meant to, like, you can, but you have to be careful. You don't put yourself with people that can bring you back to the way you were. So Paul talks about you being with God. Um, fellowship talks about um, uh, assembly, us being together, fellowship and praying. And, and that's me. I used to, when I came from, when I came to God, I, I used to, um, I had to let go of everything. I mean, I had to let go of things that distracted me. That's what Sana said. Um, when she let go of her partner, that's, she didn't want to be unequal yet. And that's like me too. When I came to God, I, God, I let go of a lot of things that distracted me. And it's really important because if you, if you leave some stuff in your walk, it could pull you down in the future. So um, I encourage everyone to be not unequally, unequally yoked with unbelievers. Christian for, for Lille, um, are you staying in New Zealand? No. <laughs> no, she's not staying here, she's living here. That's the question. That's the question. Oh my gosh. So, 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 so she's living here, not Yay. staying here. So yeah, she already, yeah. um, she's already, yeah. um, stay. she already gave her, uh, her confirmation to us. No, I didn't. Her heart. I mean, no. well, praise the Lord, guys. Praise the Lord. We're going to get into oh, some worship. Yay. This is some worship songs. But, um, God bless you, Lupe. We'll stay, guys. We're going to do some worship and hopefully this blesses you guys. Hallelujah. We're going to do some worship. And there's some worshipy guys, praise the Lord. Come here. Uh. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I feel you're too late now. That's good. <laughs> 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 Oh, amen, sis. Hi, Diana. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray um, for Diana. Uh, she she's asking for some spiritual healing. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that you just um, whatever she's going through, Lord Jesus, I pray, Lord, that the Spirit of God may um, encourage her and. and through every battle she goes through, Lord Jesus, I pray, Father, to continue to show her that she is a child of God and do not let her fall into the lies of the enemy, Lord Jesus. I pray, Father, to understand that, she, that to tell her that you're always there, Lord Jesus. I pray, Father, for all the flesh and all the lies that's lying to her right now, Lord Jesus. I pray, Father, to help Diana move forward uh, in her work, Lord Jesus. I want to thank you, Lord, the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. And uh, we pray that all the saints, Lord, we lift Diana up in her work. I want to thank you, Lord, to um, just to reunite her with you, Lord Jesus, to bring that fire back into her heart, Lord Jesus, and not focus on what the, the enemy is doing, but focus on what you're doing, Lord Jesus. I just pray, Father, to, to Diana, just to open her word and start praying and give you, and start worshipping to you, Jesus. I want to thank you, Lord, for everything you have done, Lord Jesus. I just pray that you just bless her and heal her, Lord, from the lies and of the darts of the enemy, Lord Jesus. I just pray that the, the fire of God may just touch her right now, Lord Jesus. And I ask you, Lord, just fill her, Lord, with your peace. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> um, the first song I'm going to sing is um, it's one of the sister songs. Um, it's called um, Stay. Um, our sister Grace is going to sing it. Uh, it's a beautiful song. I hope you guys get blessed. Uh, the song, I'm going to explain the song, um, Grace, what, what it means to you, the song, uh, Stay. Um, so, this Holy Spirit song is, um, was written by my sister, Sydney, yeah. Sister Chloe. Hi. Um, what really struck me is um, the lyrics, you know, nothing in this world can ever comprehend, like you cannot comprehend the love of Jesus. And, um, 
yeah, I just made that the lyrics they just little stuff to use. And um, so yeah. So God bless you guys. Um with this worship, please worship with us. I pray that the Holy Spirit just bless everyone through this screen in Jesus' name. I please I listen to the lyrics and hopefully the Spirit of God will heal all of you. Nothing in this world could ever conquer you. Your love for Jesus. Nothing in this world could ever take away. This life that you're living, nothing in this world can ever come away. Your love for me, Jesus, nothing in this world can ever take away. Life that you gave me. So I stay right here, in your presence. I'll stay right here, so in your spirit. I'll stay right here, right in your presence. I'll stay right here, so in your spirit. I'll stay, I'll stay right here. Oh Lord, I'll stay, I'll stay right here. Oh, 
next song um hopefully um it's balanced i have no clue what it sounds like in your side but we'll try our best to um the live is not the best sound but we'll try our best so next song i'll sing is um jesus is the only reason so sana, sana and um sana and lily will be leading this song so Praise the Lord. So, praise the Lord. I'm Lily here, a new member of Just Jesus Ministry in New Zealand. Stop. Hi, Bob. So, our next song will be um, He's the Reason. Can you lift the Oh, you sit Oh. Oh, my next song, praise the Lord. Jesus, 
sing one of Lily's um, Holy Spirit songs. It's got um, All I Had To Give. And maybe Lily will share about the song, how you wrote this song. Oh, hi guys. Um, so it's called All I Have To Give. Um, I had gotten it in a time where I was just going through a lot of stuff and I was just really challenged in my faith in the Lord. I didn't understand why I was go through certain battles um, but particularly I was just challenged a lot um, physically because I had been sick that year I just had an ear infection and it just went really bad and all of that um, but an encouragement that I got from Mama Hikoi was like to not let anything stop me from glorifying God and um, like I know we always hear it but it really it really stuck to me like it spec volumes just that one statement and so um, even though it was hard to worship God at the time, like I didn't even want to pray or read, but it was a battle net. But but yeah, it's like it was the least I could do, like just remembering everything else that the Lord has done in my life. So that's kind of like how the song came out, and yeah, it was in a time of weakness, and like, um, but I was trying my best to give God what I had, even though I didn't think it was much. But, All I had 
to give and all I have to offer I lay it at your feet to you I give glory and honor and praise to you my voice I raise Jesus you are king all I have to give and all I have to offer, I lay it at your feet. To you I give glory and honor and praise. To you my voice I raise. Jesus, you are King. All I had to give and all I had to offer, I lay it at your feet. To you, I give glory and honor and praise. To you, my voice I raise. Jesus, you are King. This is my prayer to live a holy life by the leading of your hand, oh God. This is my prayer to live a holy life by the leading of your hand, oh God. All I have to give, all I have to give, and all I have to offer, I lay it at your feet. To you I give glory and honor and praise. To you my voice of praise. Jesus, you are me. can let the wide headphones into mic input it should bring clarity to sound. Yeah we don't have headphones. Can you hear just regular headphones? Like regular headphones? Ian? Oh I just said that. Oh, that's right. 
Um, Ian, do you want to bring your two hundred dollar headphones? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the next song I'm gonna sing is called uh, "A Blessing from You." You guys haven't heard it. Can you probably explain the song? <laughs> Um, yeah, it's it's a pretty simple song. Um, the lyrics speak about um, my hands are lifted up, my heart is ready to receive. So, um, so as in worship, um, within your life and your lifestyle, always have that um, heart. Um, always have a um, readiness in your heart to receive what um, God um, will give you. So, um, yeah. So I just pray that um, the song. Is, um, bless you guys and yeah, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is the next song. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Oh, I can't be anointing in this place. 
Next song we'll do is um, Lily's other song that she wrote. What's it called, Lily? Uh, am I walking? <laughs> am, I, am I walking? Examination. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a good song. Um, we listen to the lyrics of this song. Oh, 
walking like Jesus Ben, good to see you, bro. Look, when's your marriage, bro? I've been waiting for like 10 years. <laughs> uh, the next song I'm going to do is a reggae song. Um, it's a reggae song it's, uh, from Jamaican Edwards. Uh, this is the first time we're going to do it. Um, so it's going to be a, it's, uh, it's called, um, it's a, I think the song has an awesome message behind it. Um, I think we just practiced it today. So Lily, I think Lily has the second verse. We're gonna try our best to sing it. But um, if we start up, praise the Lord. So it's called Fall, um, Falling People. So this is a reggae song. Okay, I'll try our best, praise the Lord. Jobless. <laughs> 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 praise the Lord. Oh 
you to come his arms still open so god bless you i hope you got blessed from the worship um man so awesome Betty, got the make um love you guys that's watching um praise the lord so we'll finish off a prayer so we love sana to close off the prayer thank you father god lord we just come for you lord and we just thank you for this time that you've given us um awesome sharing um, just understanding, Lord Jesus, that you are the truth, you are the way, and you are the life. And then, Lord, we come to the Father but through you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, for the freedom that you've set us all. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that we all continue to enjoy to the end. And I pray in Jesus' name that you strengthen us all, Lord, and that you give the increase um, through this uh, sharing. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you, man. Love you guys. Bye. Love you guys. God bless. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hello, Ellie. I see it's only a long time they see you since uni. Um, but it's awesome to watch you today. Uh, just got some to share testimony. Uh, maybe next time uh, we're going to have a for the same thing. Maybe whoever shares next uh, we might do the same thing worship here. But, um, but we love you guys. Uh, continue to follow Jesus. And yeah. We're pretty loud. I think all the neighbors heard. But praise the Lord. Hope they got blessed too. God bless you, Josh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's all so good. <laughs> um, that's awesome. Uh, God bless you. Pray for us. So continue to finish the finish the race. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Paul. <laughs> Is there still people watching? Yeah. Oh wow. Thank you, Ivo. God bless you. God bless you, Ivo. Yeah, thank. Uh, Praise Lord. Um, we can't wait to see you guys all when our lockdown finishes. So bless you guys. See you guys in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.